Yes. I'm working on a Tempest and not a last movement and have two different urtext editions. One goes back quite a while and this is, seems to be a more recent one. And what I don't really like on it is the last movement here, the Allegretto, is when it goes across the measure after the three sixteenths, which is redundant, this business of um, it has these spike marks and I just don't agree with it. The other edition had just a little staccato mark, and the way I think of it and hear it is not any kind of abrupt, uh, snapped ending to those little figures, but sort of like like you're sort of um, press lifting them a little bit, or even if they're a little short, they're not sort of dried up. So I'm going to do it in slow slow motion here um, as as I work it out, and also some fingering changes because. This edition, like the other one, had some really awkward things. Now, the way it starts um, in the left hand, they have you having these broken chords and going like this, and I'll do slow-mo. They have you going five, four, two, one, five, four, two, one, and several times. That's the tonic D minor. And then they have you doing again five, four, two, one. Now, if you go very quickly, you get very, um, detached and, and cut up kind of line there. So the way I do it is I do five, three, two, one, five, three, two, one, five, three, two, one. And here I do five, one, two, one, five, one, two, one. It really works well because you go really quickly. You have to consider as a fingering useful or expedited um, smoothly when you go quickly because this allegretto is in this case, pretty moving quick, pretty quickly. Um, so even if you did this, you can see that works really well. That's something I wanted to point out. Maybe if some people have this edition of the Urtex and they see five, four to one, five with these jumps of five to four, it's almost impossible to get the legato that you want to get in the left hand, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, so that very beginning, we will do five, three, two, one, five, three, two, one, five, three, two, one, five, one, two, one, five, one, two, one, five, one, two, one, five, three, two, one. That really works well. Now in this hand, I'm just going to give a couple of tips in this as I go along. I do use my forward wrist rolls. This was my cat. The forward wrist roll, I go forward, roll forward, and roll forward, and roll forward, and roll and roll forward, and roll forward, and it gives you this beautiful shape, you know, that you have a little wrist roll forward as you cross over the measure with this group of three going over to an eighth note, so three sixteenths redundantly going across to the eighth note on the uh, across the bar line. So um, it gives you a nice shape. Now it's so redundant too, you have to say to yourself, do you want to keep doing everything the same when you have this redundancy? And I tend to believe that to, to play beautifully you have to have not a flat dynamic. I do know that when I get to the dominant, which is this, you have tonic, da -dee -da, da -dee -da, that's all tonic, D minor. Da -dee -da, dominant, da -dee -da, da -dee -da. Now you're going to pull back from a little bit of a push into a dominant and pull back. So that's one thing you're, that is going to be harmonic rhythm that's going to be important. But also redundancy even of the tonic, you might want to think of doing something a little different. It's going to keep repeating. So some ideas. <laughs> went in and out. Now I can't tell you do this, do that, but at least mix it up a little bit with some arm weight variations when you have repeated um, broken chords and tonic, D minor, if it's going over and over and over. Otherwise it starts to sound like a robot when you play. Okay, so that's sort of my shaping and some of my, my ideas, and it doesn't mean your ideas can't be different. Um, 
Now, with Beethoven, he's known for these abrupt, um, kind of, I hate to use the word explosive, but abrupt dynamic shifts of accents suddenly. He does this all the time. He does it in his symphonies. He does in the piano music, especially the later piano music. What he has here is after he has this beautiful lyrical beginning, which is, to me, should be played lyrically. And if you notice, I didn't do this, you know, this snappy uh, spike marks that they have here over the measure. I just won't do it that way. Um, I do it more lyrically. Now, when he gets to this next part, he has... Ta-da! 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 And he gets soft. Da -di. Again, da -di. Da -di. that's the SF on the D. And he stays, you know, ya -da 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 -da, soft. So I keep that da -di. Ya -da 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 -da. get soft. Da -da -da -da. And then this explosive. Da -da -da -da. So, it's, so now this part here is we're basically doing an inverted counterpoint. We have the opening subject that was up here da -da -da -da, is now in the bass, way down there. And that should come out. And on top of that, you have what would be just broken chords outlining harmony. So you don't want to drown out the um, left hand with the broken chords. You have to have some kind of balance, but it is kind of getting bigger here because it's forte. Da -da -da -da. You can see how you're going back and forth. And then again, C major here. And then jump. Soft. Big. tricky there because you're going all these measures you have this you know you're throwing your arm at these octaves you know actually throw my arm and wrist at them like this and then suddenly you got to go to a soft from a ya, ba, ba, that and that's very tricky now I always advise when you have these kind of very uh, vulnerable places in music that you do it very slowly for a long time and you space out those octaves I'm going for the top note of the octave. The top note is where you have this intensity. Um, so you want to go balance toward the top note. So then you have ya, ba, ba. You can do it slowly and block, 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 block things sometimes. Now, what's tricky in this next section is some of these jumps in the left hand. And I have been have a new thing now that I tell my students. It's not so new, but I'm becoming more conscious of it. That when I have these these big jumps like this, see, I missed it. So I have to train myself to do a lateral motion, lateral float of the arm, stay close, and use my eyeballs to shift my eyeballs over to the jump that's way down. So I'm going to go back to soft. Here it comes. I spot it. Spot it with my eyeballs. Spot it. Spot it. Spot it. Jump. Jump. Yes, obviously. I'm going so slow and I'm doing some hesitation. I'm doing it purposely, hesitation to sort of gauge the um, um, the distance and how it feels and how my eyeballs work because I know sometimes when I go really fast, I get all of them because my eyeballs are working in conjunction with a floating arm, a lateral float. You can also do things like um, block things like this. <laughs> too. You want to block the exact notes that you're going to unfurl or unravel and, and practice the jumps that way. 
Now, when you go very fast, and I'm not going to try it right now very fast, um, but you have to be very relaxed in your arm, and when your arm moves this way, um, you really want to think of your hanging hands because you don't want to be tight either here or in the elbow. So that, that's something I was just thinking of doing. Now, the other hand is doing something tricky. It's da 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 dum da 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 dum da 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 dum that's tricky too. Here it is. That's tricky. Now this is you're trying to get legato. Three, four. Just going to try to do the top notes and get as much legato as you can get, like this. Five, four, five. Connect where you can. Three, four. Those are going to be your connector fingers. You're going to cheat a little on the bottom note of the octave so that you could get, and the pedal helps you too um, with the bottom notes to get the top notes. The, the control that you need in this movement is based on these. these complete mood shifts that he has, which he's known for, where, you know, you're suddenly getting into an intensified crescendo, and then suddenly he's pulling back, or he's injecting some SFs uh, in places where you really have to get it. Now, there's also a counterpoint that's interesting, because you hear first, you also hear a little echo of that, where he has, internal counterpoint that um, you want to bring out. You don't want to let that go by. That's this little counter line inside of that left hand that um, that you want to come back. Now where you get that from is up here. So he has here. And he goes down. Okay, and then the second time it's a piece of it. That little thread of those steps came from the upstairs first, and then it goes inside, and you want to sort of have that interplay of that counterpoint. Okay, now, I always say thank goodness for the third page. It's sort of a relief for a while of all this going on. And so the third page, you know, you're coming after the repeat. Obviously, you're going back and forth with, again, you know, lots of arm weight and just lots of um, in the keys, but also horizontal motion. And now, this is the hardest section for me, because now the intensity is going to be in the left hand completely, with the right hand doing co broken chords. Uh, the first thing to do is to play through that cello line in the left hand, which is... It and he puts all of that melody back upstairs. So now when we have the cello part downstairs, we have to start blocking what's going to happen upstairs, which is in this case starting with diminished chord. Like block, fingering block, block, tonic, block, block, block. Okay, so that's what you have to do, and then you can roll it. That's what it is. And the interaction, of course, is tricky because you do want to really bring out that left hand because that's got the what's what came from the beginning, really, but to more developed and elaborated, and going it's going to eventually go into different keys. Uh, but balance between these hands is interesting. So if you go slowly, you don't want to have to drown out. Da -da 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 -da. strike that balance that what you want to bring out is there but at the same time these broken diminished chords and then tonics 
they can't be puny because this is a kind of intensive intensified section and you need both hands okay so i'm just going to say it, it it does that and then the right hand then picks up the, the more principal idea which is back to the left hand. It's going to be a B flat minor. So let's put it this way. He's going to go into all different keys through this section. It's like a development section, really. And so you really have to practice blocking whatever hand has the broken chord and then practicing the wrist, wrist spring forwards on these, um, the motif that really comes from the beginning, but going through different keys and different I'm not going to go through all that, but that's basically what you have to do. Blocking, where you have just the so-called chords and then the animated idea from the theme in the beginning that's coming into different keys. That's going to be all this development section.